the, the sense grounding, that technique, it involves um, seeing five things that you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And it's meant to um, kind of like ground your senses and slow your breathing down. Um, you kind of look a little bit like... Don't it? say Sansa Stark. <laughs> Everyone says Everyone that. Everyone says that to you? Yeah, okay, so you've had that before. So many times. I don't see it. I do not see it at all whatsoever. I think, I think maybe it's just a redhead. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I just have red hair. Everyone thinks we're all related. <laughs> we all look the same. <laughs> no, but hey, she's drawn to like dark, crazy material. Well, she just played that role in... Phoenix is a dark, dark Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. yeah, I mean that would be amazing mm. to play something. Like I could that. totally see yeah. you in that. I mean, oh, really? Like, yeah, you. because of the red hair. Yeah. <laughs> no, just That's kidding. it. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've had people come up to you and be like, "Santa mm-hmm. Stark." Yeah. Before. Yeah, I, ha- I was doing tough. You know, tough mudder. You know, no. the it's that obstacle course that you do in like mud, and it's like twenty kilometers long, and you do like obstacles, and you're like covered in mud. Anyway, I was doing that in in Whistler. And this girl was staring at me and I'm like, why is this chick staring at me for? I had no idea. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I, th- I, I was looking at you and I'm like covered in mud. Right? <laughs> she's like, I'm looking at you and I swear to God, I thought you were um, Sophie Turner. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, sorry to disappoint. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Just me. Yeah. She probably shouldn't be looking out for Sophie Turner in like a mud yeah. obstacle yeah, course. Yeah. Never know what she's into. She might be into that kind of thing. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love traveling. I love experiencing different cultures and getting out of my comfort zone. And so, yeah, we were, I was going to do like Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia next year, um, which I'm looking forward to. And you don't have like a ticket back? I haven't got a ticket there yet. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so that's your plan. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So that's the plan. At it's the moment. definitely going to happen. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got a bunch of friends that are going over there as well. Um, so. Traveling with friends is always fun. I don't mind traveling by myself, but traveling with other people is always makes it a whole lot more fun and a little less awkward when you're trying Define to take fun. photos. <laughs> okay, true. <laughs> things, yeah. uh, I've heard of other stories where people are saying you should never go traveling with your best friend because your friendship would just fall apart. Really? Apparently, no yes. No way! So- I've traveled with many of my best friends and I've never had a fight. Yeah, it's actually surprising. I've never had a fight with them. I went, I've been to New Zealand, to Hawaii, to New York all with three of my closest friends and they were all great holidays. Okay. So maybe I was just lucky. I used to plan things a lot and then I found out that the universe likes to throw curveballs at you. So <laughs> I have things in mind that I want to do, but I'm also keeping an open mind to not be too, you know, closed off and not see opportunities when they present themselves to me. Oh, what kind of curveballs? Um, well, I was planning on staying over in Canada. I was trying to get my permanent residency over there, but then things happened and I ended up having come back to Australia very quickly. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think being too um, stubborn in what you want to do can mean that you can miss out on opportunities. You can not see. I mean, it's a cliche, but when, you know, one door closes, another one opens. And when I was coming back t- to Australia, I was, I was devastated. Like I love Canada. I had f- such close friends over there I had a good career over there I didn't really know anyone in Sydney I had no job I had no house I had no money I had absolutely no money I had $2.16 in my bank account wow. um, I had no career over here uh, all my friends had just left for some reason like I had nobody Where left in go? Sydney I don't know like in the two years that I went over to Canada for everyone had just moved away they'd gone to like, England and then other parts of Australia and um so yeah, I was really, really low at the beginning of the year. And then I kind of got back into my um, acting classes again. And as I said, tried to let go of the expectations that I had originally had and the plans that I had. And um, I got actually got into meditation quite a lot and that helped me. It helped me kind of raise my baseline emotion. Um, and yeah, just through through the work being back in class and writing again and acting again and going to auditions and I got an Australian agent and it just kind of I just got a little bit better and better and better and better and okay learned to be grateful for what I had rather than try and think about the things that I'd lost and learned to again I guess just see the joy in everyday life and I started actually writing down things that I was grateful for every day. Like I wrote down 10 things that I was grateful for. I did that for months every day. I kept a book of it and 
when you begin to see things that you're grateful for, you begin, it, it's like a, it's like a domino effect. You know, your mind then looks for other things that you're grateful for versus when you begin to look at things that you don't have, or that you begin to focus on the lack of things, your mind looks for things, other things that you're lacking and other things that you've lost. And, um, yeah, so those practices, meditation, art, acting, writing, I did a lot of poetry and things like that, which helped me express the things that I was going through. Um, just kind of change my, change how I saw the world and change how I saw my own circumstances. Congrats on coming out on that end of the tunnel. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be out this end of the tunnel. I guess it really depends on like project to project and what you're working on. So if you're working on TV, if you're working on film, or if you're working on a commercial, they're all completely different productions. Um, so working on, and it also depends if it's an indie production versus if it's a um, uh, an industry production, um, an equity production. So if you're working on, say, an equity production, everything is just so planned. You know, it's the schedule is so tight. Everyone knows exactly what they have to do, exactly where they have to be. There's people on set that will put you in places. <laughs> like They know exactly where you are at all times. Um, That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. And uh, versus something on like an indie set, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit more collaborative. You know, you might have one person doing three different roles versus if you do someone else's role on in like a high budget equity production, you know, that's a no, no. If there's, there could be like a vase here and there's someone that's been assigned to move that vase from here to here. And if you do it, you'll get death stared down. Wow. <laughs> wow. But, um, yeah, but on indie, indie productions, um, it's a little bit more like help out where you can. Um, you know, because not every role is covered. It doesn't really matter if you're in Canada or if you're in Australia. It's it's the same. It's the same all round. So an equity production in Australia is the same. It's very regimented. Um, and then indie productions in Australia is again the same thing. It's just about collaboration and helping out where you can. <laughs> they are actually. They're very nice people. I um I I didn't get the chance to go to like real Canada I guess I lived in Vancouver and it's a very multicultural society there okay. so there's so many different people but you can hear the Canadian accent it's kind of like a bit Irish a bit American can you do it can you well do well I actually talked in an American accent for the entire time that I lived over in Canada you talked like that yeah so for the entire two years just to like troll people or no I didn't actually I, I, I talk this way I, I changed my accent so that when I walked into audition rooms I didn't have to think about doing the American accent wow that's dedication um, you've so, been method acting for two years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot of people that I worked with that didn't know that I was Australian and I was like I'm actually Australian and they're so like so even when you talk to friends yeah yeah the entire two years so from the moment I landed there in Canada on the plane to the day that I left I spoke with an American accent has anyone ever asked asked you if you were American or like from another country when I was over there yeah um just like casually when you meet someone just based off your accent no because the American accent um it's very similar to the Canadian accent it's in like northern Canada in um uh eastern Canada um it's it's strong it's got that Irish kind of flair to it but in Vancouver a lot of people a lot of Canadians speak with just kind of like a general American accent. There's a slight, there's a, there's a slight change on some vowels and some words, like they say about, rather than if you were American, you would say about. Um, so you can pick up on those kinds of things. But generally, the accent is it's 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 kind of American in Vancouver. So people just thought that I was from Vancouver. Right. Yeah. Your American accent is really good. <laughs> well, I'd hope so. I spoke yeah, in it for that years. long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, I pretty- forgot how to speak with an Australian accent when I came back. I had to relearn it. Okay, did you understand people? Yeah, yeah okay. of course, yeah. Because uh, I don't understand people sometimes when I go back to my home country. You know, oh, really? It's, yeah, a little bit embarrassing, but... Yeah. Where are you from? Singapore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting language. It so was... this is your natural Aussie accent right now? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> sometimes people say that I still slide in to the American every now and again. Like, there's certain words that I say that come out with a bit of an American flair on them, but... Um, yeah, for a while it was like American and then this weird combination of Australian and American. Yeah. And now it's slowly just come back into 
Australian again. So you didn't think it would be funny to continue with an American accent from Vancouver back here to Sydney? Well, if I walked into an Australian casting office with an American accent, they would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> True. Okay, fair enough. So I decided before I moved over there that I was going to do it. Um, every now and again, I would just do it a day in an American accent, like over here before I moved over there. Just cause? Just cause. I just wanted to practice it. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, when I moved over there, I just thought rather than walking into audition rooms and thinking about my American accent constantly, which is because that's what I was, I had to do every single time. They don't, it's very rarely you'd get an audition for someone with an Australian accent um, over there. So, yeah, so I just thought I may as well just change it all together. Okay. And I did. So. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. <laughs> so it's like an undercover life for two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just changed my identity. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you're a uh, Taylor? I don't know right who now? I am at the moment. No. <laughs> when when okay. you were by yourself, did you, were you, the voice in your head, was it Canadian? <laughs> the voice in your head? Um, <laughs> I think... I think it was Australian. Yeah. yeah. Oh. My thoughts were still with an Australian accent, but oh. it came out American. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I've heard people when they start, because I worked with a lot of international people over there, because it's a very in- a multicultural society in Vancouver, um, and they, people that English wasn't their first language, they said that they still thought in their original language, like German or Korean or whatever. But they spoke, but it like translated somewhere yeah. in between and came out English. Yeah, and they had to translate it and then yeah. for it to come out. Yeah. yeah, but they said they knew that they were turning a corner when they started to dream in English Ooh. rather than in their first language. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching today's episode of The Convo Couch. And thank you to Taylor for coming on. No, oh, thank you for having me. It was fun chatting with you. Don't forget to check out the links below to Taylor's profile, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today to watch my conversation on the Convo Couch. Uh, If you're interested in learning anything more, you can catch me on Instagram or Facebook. And you can also catch some of my recent work um, on Amazon in the UK and the US and uh, Vimeo Demand. That's uh, yesterday's girl. Thanks so much.